Thousands of years ago, before Gilinor knew of chaos and war, the world of Infernus was home to various demons, including the Thonians, a race that would eventually prove to make incredible commanders in a near unstoppable army. Twelve of these demons would become the Dukes of Zaros and would lead numerous assaults on those who stood in the way of their leader. But who actually are the Dukes? What did they do with their power? And what happened to them as time passed? I'm RS Galaxy Shark, and this is RuneScape Lore. A very long time ago, on the world of Infernus, home of the demons, the Thonian demons staged an incredibly successful uprising against their infernal superiors. Their leader, Hostilius the Autocrat, became the supreme leader of Infernus. Having consumed the power of many of the demons, he became very cunning, allowing him to outsmart his opponents. However, this slowness would eventually prove to be his biggest flaw. At some point prior to his arrival in Gilinor, Zaros travelled to Infernus. He proposed a deal to Hostilius. Zaros would receive the assistance of the Thonian army, and in return he would teach the demons a method of travelling between worlds. Hostilius attempted to outsmart Zaros, creating a contract that gave control of the demons to the oldest signator. He had underestimated the age of Zaros, however. Having been bested mentally, he granted Zaros twelve legions, each led by one of the most powerful of the Thonians. Now known as the Dukes of Zaros, the troops would carry out their campaigns on Gilinor, aiming to strengthen Zaros' presence in the land. It would appear that each of the armies arrived on the world in the order of their legion number, and it's possible that the legions were numbered after their arrival which would explain this order. Duke Nemesis the Inescapable was the demon responsible for the first legion. He was sent, alongside 100 of the Avernic demons he controlled, to the area now known as Sentiston to scout the area. They discovered a huge, godlike hydra called Lornab who terrorised the locals. As per the request of the Empty Lord, the legion lured Lornab into the open and began what would become an incredibly brutal battle. Being a hydra, cutting its heads off would not defeat it, and Lornab became more powerful the longer the fight went on. After almost all of the hundred warriors had died, Zaros finally intervened, telling the survivors to retreat. Zaros proceeded to bind Lornab in a twisted maze of tentacles. He also used some ice power to heal Lornab and calm it, so it did not feel the pain of the tentacles. Zaros then channeled the Hydra's energy into a portal. This portal was what was used to bring the more demons from Infernus to Gilinor. Duke Nemesis also wrote the Codex Automatus, a book detailing the events of the battle with Lornab, as well as a method of using the tentacles and ice powers displayed by their leader, albeit on a much weaker scale. Very little is known about the Duke of the Second Legion. All that is known for definite is his name, Duke Terminus. Similarly to Duke Terminus, little is known about Duke Orcus, commander of the Third Legion. He is a powerful necromancer who appears to be very tall, and Orcus was present as Zamorak's betrayal against Zaros, choosing to remain concealed in the shadows. The Fourth Legion was led by Duke Ceres, a fearsome leader who coordinated the Zerosian army in the Caridian zerosian War. This was a brutal war that ravaged the lands south of Mythsalan. The advances made by Ceres and his army allowed Zaros to find Sliske and, after realising their shared heritage as children of Ma, convinced most of the Majorats to follow him, rather than the god of the dead, Ichthalarin. Duke Ceres most likely met his end along with the rest of his army when Tumekin shattered himself to stop the war, killing both sides of the battle almost in their entireties. Not much is known about Duke Maximus, who led the 5th Legion. All that is known is that he was eventually replaced, likely after his death, by the Majorat Hazil. Looking very different to most other Thonian demons, Duke Sercellus, the father of abominations, was a large, tentacled creature with several eyes and mouths, who was the Duke of the Sixth Legion. Because of what seems to be a trait of the abominations, he's somewhat gluttonous, and was thinking about consuming those who lived around Sentiston. During Zamorak's attacks in Zaros' throne room, Sercellus fought Luerniel Drakan, Lord of the Vampires. The seventh duke, called Duke Picus, was an incredibly superstitious demon, believing in various omens. 
He was a sort of rival for Duke Nemesis, possibly because of a difference in opinions regarding these superstitions. Once again, little is known about Duke Mephitis of the Vapor, apart from his name, title and role as the Duke of the 8th Legion of Zaros. The leader of the 9th Legion, Duke Cacus, was part of the Pennant species, a subspecies of the Thonian demons. He was, along with the rest of his species, banished to the Abyss when Zamorak invaded Infernus following his betrayal. In the Abyss, Cacus spent many years brooding in the vast emptiness, surviving on scraps of food and water that floated to him in the strange currents of the Abyss. These same currents would very slowly push him closer to Gilanor. As he approached, he detected the soul of a dreaming Fremenic girl called Aether Felsdotter. He devoured her soul entirely, causing her to travel into a deep cave and await her death. After she died deep in the cave, the penance could execute his plan. He created a portal from her body, allowing him to return to Gilanor once again. He then spawned hundreds of penance, building his army once more and assigning himself the title of Penance King rather than Duke. His time in the Abyss had warped him into a twisted abomination. As with several of the other legionnaires, only a small amount of information is known about the Dukes of the 10th, 11th and 12th legions. They were named Duke Mantus, Festus and Quirinus respectively. Much like Duke Maximus, Festus was replaced by a Marjorat. In this case, it was Wahisatel. It's therefore quite likely that Duke Festus died at some point. The 12 legionnaires that have been mentioned so far were the original Dukes of Zaros, but not the exclusive holders of the title. At some point, likely before Zamorak betrayed Zaros, a list was written of all of the current Dukes. It consisted mainly of Zaros's legatus, such as Nex, Zamorak, Vigora, and Hazil, although some of the Thonian Dukes were still active. At this point in time, there had been at least 20 different legions, with the new ones likely being products of Zaros's rise to power in the Second Age. Since this list was written thousands of years ago, before Zaros was banished and his army collapsed, the list is almost definitely not accurate today. After thousands of years without a leader, and following the huge divide amongst Zerosians because of Zamorak's betrayal, the roster of Dukes was eventually forgotten. That's it, all of the lore we have so far about the Dukes of Zaros. As you can probably tell, that means this video is coming to an end, and I want to thank each and every one of you who watched this video all the way through. If you want to see more of my RuneScape lore content, make sure to hit subscribe to get notified when I upload. Check out my Twitter and join my Discord in the links uh, just down below if you want to join the RS Galaxy Art community. Uh, comment below if you want to suggest a topic for a future lore video, and once again, thank you all so much for watching. I've been RS Galaxy Shark, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.